This year has been horrendously, horrendously bad. And I'm sure that's true for everyone, but let's just list off a few things that have been going on. Uh, I've had to give my cat laxative for like the last month. $2,000 in vet bills because the $6 laxative was the last thing they gave me to fix the problem. But it's the only thing that did its job. And I'm here today to make a new corset. Because this one, which I love dearly, I f***ed up on. And now I'm taking it apart and harvesting it for parts. And making something else before I reattempt this one. Because a week and a half of sewing resulted in nothing. That's okay. I'm trying a new pattern. This one you will see again in the future because I'm making two corsets out of this pattern. It's a lovely pattern. I just suck. It's okay. On to the next one. I probably spent as much time cutting out this fabric as I did actually sewing. It took a whole day and it drove me nuts. And it really does not help that I was stupid and accidentally sewed in an extra layer of black on two different panels. And then I had to recut them because I'm dumb. And it drove me nuts. I went ahead and outlined my white layer just because I want it as exact as I could be. It was the layer that has all my markings on it, including the boning. The course that I'm making is three layers. The 
first one is this black broadcloth. It calls for a canvas layer for stiffening and an inner cotton layer. I'm going to use this canvas just because I have it and I think it'll be nice with the black outside. And it also, for whatever reason, this is weird. It wants you to stitch together these two layers, do the whole entire corset, stitch together the lining, do all of that, and then put the boning on top of this lining layer, which to me makes no sense because a lining layer should be separate. So you can take it off and replace it if it gets messed up because it's against your body, which you shouldn't wear corsets against your body, but just in case. And it also makes sense to have the boning on the inside. So the stitches don't get worn away as much being up against your moving skin. This kind of gives a little bit of ease to it, protects the inside bits of boning channels. So do this a little bit differently than the instructions say. So I chose to put my white canvas layer on the inside so I could have all my markings on it. I used a light box to trace the pattern on the white layer. That way I can clearly see my markings where I wouldn't be able to see them or trace them as easily on this or the broadcloth. This pattern did a pretty good job of marking out where the boning channels are supposed to be. That's what these three lines are for. I've done corsets in the past where they didn't bother to mark exactly where the bones are supposed to be. So this is a nice change. I think it makes it easier. So I outlined my boning channels in black and I'm going to outline my seam allowances in red and then baste these two layers together also in red. That way it's nice and distinct and I know what I'm working with. Before I show you all that, I'm going to show you the other side that I've been working on and tell you I'm stupid or clever. Probably both because that's how sewing is. So there are two boning channels right on the seam allowance because the seam allowance goes right up next to this line on almost every single of these patterns. So I decided to save some of my twill tape and just encase the boning in the seam allowance. Yes, this is harder on my hand because I have to hold it like really, really carefully with the fingers underneath pressing really flat against the boning channel and it causes right here to cramp, which is always fun, but I think it has adds less bulk because I'm not going to add an extra layer on top of this seam. Also, I don't have to stitch as much because I just have to stitch this one side instead of finishing the seam, stitching that across here, then putting one of these on top and stitching both sides of that. And then having right here have an additional two layers of stitching. That just seems bulky and cumbersome and not like it would be fun at all. So I took the slightly hard route to save that mess right there.
all of my basting stitches. Adding in the grommets was a whole thing on all on its own. I briefly show it, but then I cut away because it was a struggle. What also was a struggle was my corset busk, which was delivered, uh, but not to me. And no one returned it, even though I asked the landlord to send out an email and I had to contact the post office, which is my living hell. Side note. If you don't iron your thread after you wax it with most waxes you can find in Joann's or Hobby Lobby, it's not going to work as well. It is for sure worth your time to iron it before you do corset flossing. It will make your life so much better and the corset floss will turn out way flatter and way nicer looking. is what my workroom looks like because of this wall do you see how gross this wall is our apartment complex didn't paint it very well and because this is a concrete wall facing the outside of the building we're on a corner apartment this wall gets moldy a lot. I had to move all my furniture and these poor stuffed animals up here had to get steamed hopefully to kill anything that might have been touching them. They're gonna get steam cleaned hopefully again later. Poor little guys. And this, this is the desk I normally film on. Yeah, that ain't gonna be happening. So I'm filming this video, this one right now, and I am super close to being done with the corset. My corset bus finally came in. I ordered a second one, and the person was kind enough to send another one, so I have two that arrived yesterday. I'm hopefully going to finish the very bottom binding of it and the, add the corset bus in today. I'll see if I can film it, because... This room clearly will not work, and I don't think anywhere else in the house will work because our coffee table is clear, so that makes it hard to see in. The cat screaming at me is another issue, but unrelated to this one. So, we'll figure it out. Bye. Hey look, I found a spot to sew in where I could actually film. It was extremely awkward. I cut most of it. That's okay. I can finish this video, thank Christ. I find doing the binding around the corset a lot easier than doing the boning channels, but I swear they take the same amount of time. Too long. At some point I'll learn to use a sewing machine. We're not there yet, but someday, someday maybe.
some final thoughts on this corset. Overall, pattern is really easy to follow. I feel the actual pattern itself is very well marked and it didn't take that long and it turned out pretty good. Some downsides are I feel it is a little small in the bust area. I have a lot of spillage up top, which is hugely awkward. And you see that little flap at the bottom of the corset where the bust the busk clearly isn't the right size. I would say a nine and a half would have been a good size for me on this pattern but I didn't have access to one of those, so I had a choice of choosing a 10 inch busk or a nine inch busk. The 10 inch goes up into the seam allowance, which doesn't leave enough room, and the nine inch, you see what happens where it kind of gaps a little bit and it's kind of noticeable. Not a huge deal, but considering there is also another corset in this pattern, that is also the exact same size. It mm, detracts from it a little bit. But if you are looking for multiple options, there are two different kinds of corsets in this one. And I almost feel like I should make the other one to see if it helps with that weird boob spillage thing. Because it's designed a little bit differently. But it has the same waist dimensions and bottom. And then it also comes with two different stay options. If you're interested in that, that, this might be a good pattern to get. Overall, I'm fairly happy. We'll see how wearing it goes. I don't feel it is the most comfortable corset I have made. But then again, I also screwed up what I thought would be the most comfortable pattern. So that is worth noting. I didn't screw this one up. If you're looking for a simple pattern, this might be it. I should be a good YouTuber and say like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Tell me, should I have gone with a different bust size? Should I have... is there a 9.5 one? Can you find it online? I don't know. Should I have gone with a 10 inch one? I don't know. Tell me. Tell me what you think. Or just say something. Tell me it's awful. Do it. Whatever. Go for it. Bye.